Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. You know, as to the issue about the growth in medical assistance, I, I think it bears mentioning as well, you know, we've always had programs for these people. The Affordable Care Act came online, and yes, we moved a lot of people to, Minnesota, uh, to medical assistance, mm -hmm. but we had Minnesota Care that went to 275% of federal poverty level, not 138%. Minnesota has been a generous state. Um, and it's something that we've always been proud of. We had general assistance medical care as well um, that covered a, a lot of the people that, that we saw today. And I'm wondering if this is all about um, workforce, uh, Senator Johnson, uh, do you know where Minnesota stands in workforce participation uh, in, in the country? Senator Johnson. Madam Chair, Senator Laurie, appreciate the, con the comments. Uh, well, there's a couple things there. I know that, that presently we have more job openings in this state than we do workers. And one of the testifiers today from DEED, I believe it was, said that this would almost double the number of people driven to their workforce uh, programs. I mean, if, we're, if we can double the number of people that we're training, finding jobs for in this state, this is an incredible benefit for those uh, people who are, who are on the margin right now that are able-bodied without dependents. Uh, and Chair, to I, Senator Larry. I think the Assistant Commissioner from Deed said a very different thing about his conclusion. It would drive, um, you know, as many as, the, as are there today in again, but just to work on paperwork, not to actually seek jobs, to work on the paperwork that's required in your bill. And it would displace those that are actually seeking jobs through their uh, employment services. That's what he said. It's going to move us backwards in our ability to get people into jobs. Um, and so, yes, you, you know, you had a couple of facts that he stated, but I asked about Minnesota's work participation Senator and Johnson. what is. I, I would just like oh, to. I was still I, speaking, but. I would just like to correct, because I do have it written down when he said that employment services would double. That's what I have in quotes here, but. Continue. Uh, Continue. Madam Chair, Senator yes. Larry. He said that, that they would have twice as many people coming to them. But I guess what you missed and didn't write down is that those extra people coming to them would be coming to them to fill in the paperwork, to prove that they're seeking jobs, to prove that they're doing the work that you're requiring, the, the, mm -hmm. the efforts that you're requiring, not actually even having the the capabilities to work yet. They're working on their health, too. We heard that very clearly from the testifiers. They're working on their health. You need health in order to work. And so my question about Minnesota's work participation rate, Minnesota does work. Minnesota works well. We have the second highest work participation rate in the entire country. We have between 80 and 90% of all Minnesotans between the ages of 18 and 60 in the labor market. You said in your opening statements that you wanted to follow the lead of Arkansas and Kentucky. Arkansas and Kentucky are in the 50 percentiles. They're in the 50s. Their people don't work. Minnesotans work because we invest in their health. Our investments in the health of Minnesotans our people and our communities pays tremendous dividends to our economy and to our businesses around the state. We shouldn't be following the lead of Kentucky and Arkansas. Arkansas and Kentucky should be following the lead of Minnesota. We have the second highest work participation rate in the entire country, something that we should be proud of, not turning our backs on. And, you know, if I, I'd like to get members to step through the fiscal note a little bit here. You know, we are a finance committee. Um, on page 11, this is going to get, you know, a little hard. In the, in the MA adults without children category, you know, so that's up in the upper left here. You can see that's the area that we're in. You can come down to the to the bottom, the federal share line, and this is a calendar. This is fiscal 2021, which is not fully um, implemented yet. I mean, I should say there's still more work to be done. But in order to save 
you know, I'm putting it in, in air quotes here, save $12 million of state money that's invested in the health of our people and our populations. We're giving up on $113, $114 million of federal money. Now that money is actually used to buy services, to buy services from our health care uh, community all across the state. We're giving up, in order to save $12 million, we're giving up $114 million of federal revenue that comes in to support our health care industry. That's why the hospital association and the MMA and the mental health and the chemical dependency groups stand in unison, in strong <coughs> opposition to what you're proposing to do. If you turn to page 13, this is, this is in the MA disabled category. And, you know, there's two effects here. First, you know, um, a lot of the people, when we did the Medicaid expansion, a lot of people who used to have to come through the disability door in order to gain health care through special needs basic care, um, uh, because of the expanded uh, income limits and the removal of the asset tests, over 20,000 people were able to come through the regular door for medical assistance. That was a good thing. That was an amazing thing for people's lives. 20,000 people living with disabilities could be treated with the dignity of having access to the care that they needed every day. And uh, just over 3,000 of them, again in, in 2021, are going to have to turn away from that and go back through the special needs basic care. Now, the interesting interaction with this is that when they turn away from the <coughs> Medicaid expansion, Medicaid expansion population <coughs> is paid at 90% federal. So we're saving 10 cents on the dollar. We're moving these people into a program that doesn't work as well for them, that we get paid 50 cents on the dollar in, and the special needs basic care rates are 65% higher. That's why this disability piece is so incredibly expensive in the proposal that you have before us. It's not a good idea to do this, and it harms people's lives. And, you know, you said also that, that you worked with a lot of stakeholders who helped you, you know, who contributed to helping put this bill in the shape it was today, that it is today. And, and I'm just, it, it struck me because you only had one testifier in support of this bill, and we did ask if he'd stick around. I think he left, and I haven't seen him since. Um, and I'm just curious as to the stakeholders that you worked with. Did you, did you, have you contacted the hospitals in your region, Senator Johnson? Senator Johnson.